Ooh. Ooh, damn me. You know what? I could just do with some tea and tea. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tea Anteria. It has been far far too long, it's actually been around two months since you have last seen me on YouTube doing videos and uh, I do apologise for that, I was waiting for my new computer and I have it now so I'm back and I'm going to be doing some more Tea Anterias as well as Tea and Tamriels for Elder Scrolls Online so it's very exciting stuff, um, so let's get right into this episode. As you are more than likely aware, The Lost Shores is the next big content patch for Guild Wars 2. On their main website, they have released a timeline which shows The Lost Shores in November and a locked December patch. So can we expect something every month from ArenaNet to put into the game of Guild Wars 2 and will it be effective and actual fun and detailed content in the game? What are your opinions on this and do you think they can pull it off for monthly content? Now, although on the Guild Wars 2 website we can only see this page, Massively and MMORPG.com have had more access to the Lost Shores and know a lot more about the details, so the links to those articles will be in the description, but I'll cover some of the main points now. So for all you PvP players out there, you'll be getting a new map, Temple of the Silent Storm. Now this map is featured in the middle of an iceberg that is inhabited by the Kodan and where the dojo train. Now the main feature of this map is the meditation aspect to it and the certain points around the map where players can go and meditate. This meditation process will grant them a buff that will increase their points when killing players or capturing objectives and the most contested buff that you'll be able to get is the one that resets capture points. So again, another PvP map with very different aspects to it as we expect from ArenaNet. So let's get into the meat of the update and see what ArenaNet have planned for us in this new content patch that's coming out from the 16th to the 18th of November. It's called The Lost Shores and of course we are going to be expecting some new lead up events to one big event at the end of it which was kind of similar to the same process as the Halloween event that we've just experienced. So on the 16th of November, we are going to be starting off a series of events in order to get to the Lost Shores. The Lost Shores is going to be an island that's going to be inhabited by this new race called Karka. These Karka are going to rally up and invade Lion's Arch, which is where our event starts and we've got to sort of work out a way to defeat these Karka because ArenaNet have added some new mechanics into the game. The Karka have a shell around them that's impenetrable so I'm guessing when you attack them it's just going to say immune immune immune. So we have to find out and research a way in order to break through this shell so we can actually kill the things so that we can actually progress onto the Lost Shores where we can invade them or counter invade them. The Lost Shores is going to be a level 80 zone, however for the actual weekend event, Arena are going to make it so that if you're a lower level you can scale up to level 80 in order to do the content, however when the event is over the Lost Shores is going to stay there as a playable island but it's going to be a level 80 zone. So if you're a lower level make sure you do check out the island because you can experience some level 80 content before you're level 80 but after the event I'm afraid you're going to have to level up in order to carry on with the content. Of course we can expect the Lost Shores to have new monsters, new events, new jumping puzzles and new areas to explore um, in Guild Wars 2 so it's all very exciting um, but one thing that I think a lot of people are excited for is the finale. Now ArenaNet being ArenaNet they haven't really given any details on the finale of the event yet however they said it's going to take a lot of effort from the players and probably be a lot harder than the Mad King was in the Halloween event I'm guessing. And that's not all, with this new content patch we'll be getting a new dungeon. Now this dungeon is called the Fractals, the Fract, the Fractals of the Mists. Um, and I'm really excited for this, it's something completely different, but it's very hard to explain. Basically it's going to be a set of nine mini dungeons. So let's put it into a scenario. You get together with five of your friends and you go into one of these dungeons. It's going to be a mini dungeon that can take anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes to complete. And these mini dungeons are known as fractals. 
So you will be presented with three factors each time you go to challenge the content. Once you complete these three fractals, you'll be teleported back into town. The next time your party of five go into one of these fractals, the content's gonna be extremely, well, progressively harder. So you go into it again after you completed your first three, and the mobs, the bosses you encounter are going to hit harder and have more health. And every even number of times you go back into the fractals to, con to challenge this content, you're going to experience a special boss fight. So for example, you go into your three dungeons the first time with your party of five, you complete it all and you get teleported back to town, you repair your merchant off your stuff, and then you go back in and the content's gonna be harder, you complete your three, and then because it's your second time, you're going to get a special boss fight. That's going to probably be, give you more rewards or just be awesome. And then you go back out and you go back into it again, it's going to be even more harder and you'll get complete your three fact tools and come back out. Now it's going to be your fourth time, you're going to go back in again, it's going to be even more harder, and when you come back out, because it's your fourth time, it's an even number, you're going to encounter a special boss fight. So it's going to be really exciting and very, very different from what we used to from any MMO we've ever played before, and I'm really excited for this, and I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think that this is a better way? Do you think that you prefer this type of... Um, I don't know, experience of doing dungeons, the fact, the fact that you have to do three at a time and then when you go back in it's harder and it's always different and it's always more engaging and interesting or do you just prefer the grind style dungeons where it's the same one and you have to do it over and over again in order to build up tokens in order to buy your gear? What do you prefer? And that about covers it for The Lost Shores, that's pretty much all we know or at least all I know uh, for now, so I hope you're all excited. It's only going to be in a couple of days, so um, yeah, get your exotic gear ready to challenge these dungeons. And uh, if you're into PvP, get excited for the new map, and of course, the new islands and new content in general that we're going to get. Bring on Christmas, I say, bring on Christmas. <laughs>
basically. So, uh, but I know Matt Visual is going for one. Um, this is definitely going to change his aspect, his overlook, and getting it. Um, he's actually doing a guide whilst he's getting it. So, if you want any more updates on his legendary uh, nonsense, then probably Matt Visual is a good way to go and to watch his guide videos and see what changes are made. And all those links would also be in the description to Matt Visual's playlist that he's doing. And honestly, that is all for this episode's Tea Interior. Um, I'm going to try to do Tea Interiors every week um, and try to cover the news that comes out in that week. And if there's not much news, then I'll try to sort of replace the idea of having a new segment with something else, maybe something crazy I did in game or something that my guild's doing or... I don't know, if I could think of anything, I will put it in, in replacement for the news if there's no, if there's nothing going on. Um, but other than that, I would like to thank you all for watching, um, and I'm going to let you continue watching me fail at this jumping puzzle. And I did actually forget to put the location and what have you in the video, so uh, I'll put the link to the actual jumping puzzle and where I got it and stuff uh, in the description so you can go check that out and do it for yourself um, but it was quite, I don't know, it wasn't really a frustrating one, it's actually quite a fun one um, oh my days, this is not going very well yeah, it was quite fun, I liked it and yeah, I would recommend doing it I'll probably try to put in a jumping puzzle on every single tea interior however, I'm not very good at jumping puzzles so it might get a little bit crazy and some of them might go ridiculously bad um but yeah i'll let you guys finish watching this if you so please but other than that uh, i'll see you all next time and make sure you stay tuned and uh yeah give t and tamriel a watch uh, the elder scrolls online emma that's coming out next year maybe i'm not too sure um but that's what t and tamriel is all about learning about elder scrolls online and seeing um well i'm basically getting hyped up for it uh, so thank you for watching yet again and i'll see you all Next time. Strong. Amazing. One more thing for my list of accomplishments. <laughs>